Hi, I'm Christina from Leafy Lester and this is a video all about Ethereum Polydifluorum. I have a mother plant I want to give the chop today, I want to propagate it, but obviously I took a few precautions to ensure 100% success rate. And I also have a bunch of little seedlings that I grew from seed on my own in this very video right here. And I want to give you a few more updates on them, pop them up and see how they look. Ta-da! This is my Anthurium polydiflorum. It's a little tricky to get this in frame fully. It has huge, really long leaves and that's what I love about it so much. They are velvety, they have a little glittery sheen to them. Magnifique! I had this plant for a while now and this year I was able to successfully pollinate it and grow berries from it. This whole process took about nine months, so it was quite a strain on this plant. It took a lot of resources from it, hence the yellow and ugly leaves. So this is the first new leaf after the berry harvest. I was a little worried in between that it might just like die. So that's partially why I went ahead and took a few precautions. By this I obviously mean air layering. You can see the little sausage on here. It's not the best look, but it's working. This anthurium has a weird growing pattern. It grows almost sideways. I just plopped a lot of moss on top of the pot and then I also tried to wrap some moss around the rest of the stem. To close in the moisture I just use cling film. I just don't like the look of it now and how it's growing. I also just want more of it so I can sell it in my shop. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of second moss propagation in general, I love air layering with sphagnum. It gives me a little more peace of mind when propagating. This moss was on there for let me lie, at least three months probably. This is how it looks on top. And then we have a little part right here as well. Definitely got a few good roots going in there. Now it's time for the most tedious part as always, removing all of the sphagnum moss from the roots. This takes anywhere from around five minutes to an hour. <laughs> I'll be back when I'm done. Ta -da! All done. The situation is as following. On top of the pot, great growth. We have some beautiful roots growing all over the place. And then down here on the, well, the main part of the plant, we have but four little roots attached. It's really not a lot to work with. I am pretty sure that I can regrow some part of the plant at least and it's gonna be all right. So I'll just do a little restart. So if these little roots aren't enough to support this big piece down there, I understand and I will accept my fate. Let's get the scissors out. I will be able to put these up right away. Of course, I am cleaning my scissors before I use them. Every single one of these little rings around the stem is a node and typically each node has one new growth point. Although on this anthurium, the auxiliary buds aren't as well visible as elsewhere. Let's cut right here. <coughs> Done. A more or less clean cut right here. Moving on with the rest of the plant. The good thing is anthurium roots are quite sturdy most of the times. So as we can see, we have one root branching off right here and then two more roots down here. And this will be just a little wet stick. Cut pieces with one of these roots attached. So I'll do this. And then down here it's much smaller, but I can still do at least one chop. Now I have three cuttings. I'll have to untangle those from each other now. Cutting number one and its root system. Cutting number two and its root system. Cutting number three and its root system. Then we got this top cutting. It's a little sad to be cutting off this much, 
but we are working with what we got. And if I say so myself, I'm pretty good at making decisions on the fly. So I'm cutting off the ugly damaged leaves. So we have a little bit of stem to work with. Growing it upright would be kind of nice, don't you think? This looks so stupid, oh my goodness. I hope this little leaf is okay with me cutting everything off. Because this time this isn't a great example for how well air layering can work. I wanted to show you my El Chico Red I propagated. This is a great top cutting with a great root system thanks to air layering. Now, I want to try something new and keep rooting this in some semi-hydro substrate. I got this from Cybertonica. I got a little netted pot and a cute cash pot. Let's get going. I'm going to rinse this out and then we're done. I'm also going to use this little thing to root the wet stick. You can submerge it halfway and then keep it in a humid and warm place and it should root and grow in no time. Moving on to these cuttings. Let's pot these babies up. I do have, <laughs> sorry that was a little loud, my trusty Cybertonica Anthurium soil mix. So this should be perfect for these babies. If you're interested in custom soil mixes for types of plants, so Ficus mix, Hoya mix, Anthurium mix, Aeroid mix, Succulent mix, all of the <laughs> possible plants you could think of, then check out Cybertonica because they have a soil mix for almost every type of plant and they are great. So I'll leave a link down in the description and with my link you can save 10% off your order every time. Now, pots. This should be alrighty. Let's go. Lovely soil mix, nice and chunky. Almost like spaghetti. Give it a little tap so everything can settle. Then refill if necessary. And my little cutting will basically stay on top of the soil. So I've been thinking a lot recently about like myself, why I am like I am. Would you say I'm boring? <laughs> Because, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like filming these videos, my personality isn't showing through. And then sometimes I'm just quiet, I describe what I do and otherwise it's kind of boring, you know? <laughs> Put the noodles in. I mean, doesn't this look like a really disgusting bowl of ramen? <laughs> nice little noodles. All three done. And I'll make sure to include a few results if there are any at the end of the video. By the time I'm editing, it will be a few weeks. So maybe we can already see something. Back to the issue. I don't really know how to like voice opinions or feelings. I'm not very opinionated on things like all of the time. I just sit in peace and quiet and just do my thing. And that's usually how it goes. I'm realizing this might be a me problem and I should just like work on voicing my thoughts more. Or maybe that's not even what you want. Maybe you want just a chill, non-opinionated, non-dramatic, non-problematic YouTube video so you can chill. I don't know. <laughs> Forgive me for oversharing. Transforming for part two of this video. Let's move on to the seedlings. I have a little glass right here and then I also still have the huge palette of seedlings. I have half of it in moss and half of it in perlite and by now I can say the moss seedlings did way better this time. The perlite was much harder to keep moist at the perfect like sweet spot so they are not too wet and too dry. Out in the wild, I would use Fagnum. If you have it in a little Tupperware box or a greenhouse or a cabinet, something that keeps humidity up constantly, you could easily go with perlite and be just fine, I guess. Let's start with these. I'll try. I think this is probably the biggest little seedling that I have. 
get these out and here I really don't want to hurt any roots because they are still so little. There are significant size differences in root system and leaves and I'm hoping to get more growth and energy into the plants by putting them into soil. Filled my little pots with some soil and with a chopstick I'm going to make little holes, plop in the roots and I'm going to put a few into each pot since they are still so small, like so. Number two and three. I do want to proceed and make about a million more of these I guess. Now this is an example of how I typically do my planty things. I just sit and do my things in silence <laughs> and it's super boring. <laughs> I've got a good selection of little planties here. I'll continue potting them before they dry out and then I'm going to do the next round. It's not like it was on clearance or anything, but I do want to show you the steps that you should take to make a monster like this grow as well as it can. Five hours later, I have a tray full of seedlings and a million little pots of seedlings. Where am I going to put all of these? I'm cold. I'm going to have a little dinner because it's like really late already. I got some leftover cabbage soup. Delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Then I just want to water all of these, shower them a little bit or just spray them with water. Keep them slightly humid, warm, maybe give them a little bit of light as well. Now I want to say goodbye to you but future Christina has all of the updates on the seedlings and the propagations as of the date of publishing this video. Hey 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 it's three months later and these are the seedlings some really good ones big ones and then some smaller ones it's probably best to discard the shitty seedlings then we have the cuttings they all look great all of them show signs of new growth some already have new leaves attached which makes me really happy these look amazing and of course lastly the top cutting it's still alive the leaf survived which also makes me happy so it seems to be holding on and growing new roots in the substrate so i'm excited for any future growth <laughs>